Hi, Stephen Caleb here with Brownells, and today we're going to look at muzzle devices and which is right for you. So we've got a bunch of them lined up here. Why don't you take us through what we've got going from right to left? Sure, so first up, we have the flash hiders. Now the flash hiders, as you can see, are, have large ports all the way around the side, and then the front of them is relatively open compared to some of the other ones. Now what these do is simply just mitigate muzzle flash, that's it. And the reason, of course, you'd want to mitigate muzzle flash comes more from a military standpoint, is right. not being able to tell where the, uh, or the, the, whatever you're engaging, not being able to tell which direction that yep. muzzle flash is coming from. That was a military development all the way. Exactly, yep. And moving on to compensators. Typically, for the most part, your compensators are going to be combined with a muzzle brake or a flash hider. Um, these two here, or we'll, we'll start with this one, this is your standard A2 flash hider. Uh, as you can see, it's very similar to this one, except it's closed on the bottom. So all that gas is going to be directed upwards. And what that's going to do is help also uh, muzzle climb during right. rapid fire. Plus, do away with your dust signature if you're shooting prone exactly. in the desert or something. Exactly. Yeah. And also mitigate muzzle flash. So it doesn't mitigate muzzle flash as much as a dedicated flash hider. Um, but when you combine it with a compensator, you kind of get the not necessarily the best of both worlds, but you get an equal amount of each. Right, it's not gonna do either job 100% well compared to a dedicated exactly. unit. Exactly. And there are other manufacturers that make them as well. This one here, um, as you can see, large ports on the side and the bottom's covered for the same exact reason. Uh -huh. Now moving on to muzzle brakes. The purpose of a muzzle brake is to reduce recoil. Uh, as you can see, the hole in the front is cut a lot smaller. They're going to be close to the diameter of the bullet. Ideally, they want to be about 20 thousandths over bullet diameter um, for most of them, and that can vary between different calibers and different manufacturers and things like that. Um, so you want to keep it close to the bullet diameter so that you're directing all that gas outward rather than it being pushed back on the muzzle as the bullet exits. Right. So Basically, you, you're running it into some kind of perpendicular surface right. to where the, it hits that with a battering ram effect. and. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly how it, it works. Forward. Yep. So you're taking out the, um, that, I, for lack of a better term, jet propulsion aspect mm -hmm. of the, the actual gases pushing back on right. the rifle. Redirecting it. Redirecting it, yeah. And what that does is mitigate recoil um, a, large a very large amount. And with that being said, the, as a general rule, as far as muzzle brakes or any of these go, really, the faster the bullet di or the faster the bullet velocity, the more effective a muzzle brake is going to be. So, for example, if you're shooting like a seven mag mm -hmm. versus a forty-five seventy, the muzzle brake is going to be a lot more effective on the seven mag because a lot more of the recoil from that comes from the actual powder burning and everything like that. I aspect. assume there's a lot of excess energy to be used at exactly. the muzzle on a, something that burns a slower powder like that. Exactly. So on, let's say, like a 4570 or something mm -hmm. like that, a lot of that recoil is coming from the kinetic energy because it's a large cartridge. Yeah. So for mitigating recoil on that, you'd be better off using something like a recoil pad or adding weight to the rifle itself yeah. to help absorb it. So those are muzzle brakes. What's right. the difference between a muzzle brake and a compensator? So the difference between a muzzle brake and the compensator is that the compensator is directing the gas in a specific direction to help push the muzzle in a desired direction. Um, for example, like your AK-47 slant brakes, mm -hmm. those are designed right. to push it at an angle because of where the mass on the bolt is and where it's so going to be pushed. Your natural climb is going to be exactly. on auto fire or something. Exactly. So that's technically compensating. It's a compensator. It's compensating for something. Um, and it's no different than the 1911 comps with ports cut on top. Exactly. Keep the muzzle down. Exactly. And, rapid fire. Right. And they also, you can also combine them. Um, for example, this muzzle brake here is also a compensator. It has ports on the side as well as on the top. So it's going to be reducing recoil and also directing that gas upward to push, help keep the muzzle down and push down on the muzzle. So it can do multiple jobs as well. And also, you can have them combined into a flash hider. You see on the front of this, it looks like these flash hiders, so it's also going to help reduce flash. So with this one here, um, typically with devices of this design, they tend to act as muzzle brakes better than anything else. Okay. Um, because, of course, uh, you're going to be directing some gas here, but the gas is going to take the path of least resistance, which is going to be these larger side ports. 
you're going to be reducing a lot of recoil. You're going to be doing a little bit of compensating and, of course, some flash hiding there as well. The main point of all of this, I guess, really, is that if you have a muzzle device, um, uh, such as a muzzle brake, it'll act as a muzzle brake, reduce recoil well. Flash hider, it'll do that well. Um, same thing with the compensator. When you start combining them, they do them decently. They won't do everything well. Um, so it's more effective to stick with one for a specific purpose, but there are certainly uses. At times you want to use uh, multi-purpose ones, for example, um, on a lot of competition ARs and things like that, you want to reduce recoil and keep your gun shooting flat as possible. So then a compensator slash muzzle brake comes in really handy there. You don't really need it as far as a flash hider so much in that aspect. Right. Um, so well, there's there's a, certainly a use for each one. A lot of people are probably wondering, is it worth it to put a muzzle brake on a 223? I mean, on a lightweight 308 <laughs> or a 308 in general, you know, there's a lot of recoil there. Mm -hmm. If you want to rapid fire with it, I would comp it. But a 223 on a spring uh, operated gas system like that on AR-15, is it really that big of an advantage? Well, if you're using a heavy, um, a 223 that's built on a heavy platform, probably not because it's going to be relatively soft recoil anyway because the mass of the rifle is going to absorb a lot of that recoil. If you have a lightweight build and you're trying to keep your rifle as light as possible, there's going to be more recoil because there's going to be less recoil absorbed mm -hmm. by the mass of the rifle, so you'll want a muzzle brake to kind of help with that. Some of those lightweight ARs do kick a little bit. Right. Surprisingly, they do. Exactly. So that's when a muzzle brake on a 223 would be extremely beneficial. And I know a lot of varmint hunters uh, use muzzle brakes so they can keep their crosshairs on their target right. after you they can, touch the shot off. Exactly, yeah. And if you're it's doing... It's pretty cool, really. Yeah, it's really cool when you're doing something like prairie dog hunting or yeah. something like that. You can actually watch the the bullet impact the target and it uh, yeah. adds, adds a lot to it. And another muzzle device I'd like to mention that's not up here is the suppressor. Oh, yes. When you have a suppressor such as this Gemtech suppressor here, it's going to be acting like a muzzle brake uh, because the chambers on the inside, the baffles and everything are set up similar to what is on a muzzle brake itself. So it's going to help with that gas dispersion. It's trapping a whole lot of gas that would normally go straight out the muzzle. Exactly. So it's going to reduce a lot of recoil as well. Um, it's also going to reduce sound. So muzzle brakes in general, it's almost like the more effective of the muzzle brake, the more sound it adds. Right. Um, so muzzle brakes are very loud at the trade-off for less recoil, but with a suppressor, you have less recoil and less noise, so it's the best of both worlds That's there. probably why 9mm and 300 Blackout are so, pop are so popular with cans on them like that. Exactly, yeah, and the mass of the can, of course, helps reduce a bit of recoil as well, um, even the lightweight models. And the can itself, depending on um, what projectile you're shooting and how much, you know, the, the powder charge and everything in that projectile, you can get a bit of muzzle flash from them. And there are companies like Dead Air that make attachments that uh, fit on the end of their suppressors so that they also reduce muzzle flash, which is a, a cool feature so as well. So the, the more powerful rifle calibers, for example, would still have flash at the end of the suppressor? Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, not so much your 300 blackouts and, and shorter subsonic rounds right. like that. Uh, mostly with the supersonic stuff. Um, like your 5.56 and, uh, of course, your Magnum calibers, your 308s, different sure. things like that. So where does somebody go if they want to learn more about this stuff? So there's a lot more uh, depth we can go into on this because there's just so much that goes into it. But um, the study's done by Julian Hatcher, and you can pick it up in Hatcher's notebook or read some of his other studies and online and, and places like that. Uh, but he goes into a lot of detail as far as the numbers go, why, what works the way it does, and how effective it is. And as far as recoil reduction goes, it depends on a lot of factors, um, yeah. so we can't tell you what exact percentage you're going to get. But if you have any questions about these and what may be best for your particular rifle, uh, feel free to give us a call on the tech line or leave us a comment down below. We'll be happy to help you out. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.